There you have it, Sony's first Paris Games Week press conference. Uh, I think there was lots of... Uh, that was a doozy. Yeah. Lots that of, was a lot of fun almost, stuff there. Almost two hours. Yeah, that was a very long conference. Yeah, lots of surprises, lots of cool game demos. I'm Darren Hatfield, joined by Max Scoville, Brian Altano, what's and up? Ryan McCaffrey. Let's break this down. What, what's, what's, what's your for your biggest takeaways? You can ride a bear. You can, can ride, ride a bear. A bear in the game wild. wild. You can ride a bear. Wild. I know you can ride bears in some other games, but this game looks like you can really, really ride a bear. Yeah. You can ride them in water, yep. which is a, a place most people don't even let you ride bears in, yeah, in bear riding prohibited. games. Yeah, uh, I think that one of the weirdest things is that uh, Uncharted is just saying, screw it, let's go full sci-fi with our multiplayer, or all of their sort of like yeah. spiritual boss stuff that they added in a lot of their games. They're just like, sure, there's like summons now, and you can get mystical powers and, and portal jump through the levels. It's very yeah. odd. Ryan, what was the big takeaway for you? I find it interesting, Max, that your brain went straight to wild, uh, even joke or no joke, because that's actually, that was my big takeaway. That was, game looks was, incredible. Was, looked fantastic. When they revealed it at, what, last year's Gamescom, I was like, that, that. it reminded me of uh, a canceled original Xbox game that Peter Molyneux was doing called BC. Never made it out. Oh, yeah. But it always, I saw it right. at E3 one year behind closed doors. It always fascinated me. I was always sad to see it killed. And this just sort of brings back that sort of, that spirit to me. And I just love everything about it. It's just a huge open world. I mean, we don't really know what quite what time period it is, but just the, the sort of explorative nature-based it's just such a contrast to the sci-fi futuristic shooter stuff we get sure. inundated with now that I just love the the potential of that game. So that, that was my my biggie. I mean, it's interesting because it, it looks like a, it's a fantasy game. It's, yeah. a whim, it's whimsical. It's got a lot of kind of uh, you know fantasy elements. There's a giant naked snake lady yep. at the end. There's little... some sorcery in there. Uh, but it's also like kind of a caveman game, yeah. and it's it doesn't look. It's not trying to be you know historical. It's looking very very mythological, and it's kind of hard to pinpoint where it's you know what part of the world. I guess it's sort of. Old timey Europe, give or Seemingly, take. Seemingly, yeah. Maybe. Sort of a but it looks, it looks imaginative, you know. It, they're not trying to stick to any particular style guide that exists. It's sort of just they're they're getting getting real creative here. Uh, yeah, Horizon uh, Zero Dawn, which that I will it will take me a while before I remember what comes after the colon there. Horizon, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, that looks really cool, but I think I'm way more excited about this because it looks kind of like kind of cartoony, a little tiny bit. Yeah, right. You know, it's still got some gritty Cartish. stuff in there, but art style. And and yeah. Michel Ancel has uh, you know famously been trying to make Beyond Good and Evil two for years at Ubisoft and just hasn't been able to get it off the ground for whatever reason. And you know he's made great Rayman games, so it's cool to see such a a renowned creator finally able to branch out and do do something new. Yeah, yeah. and it looks like you're gonna you're gonna get some sort of like sandbox sort of overcoming. Uh, area type of thing where you can basically say, I can go in here with a snake or right. uh, in, in the talons of an eagle, or I can go in there with these, he sent a bunch of ravens to piss these guys off and then wrote a bear in and, and mess with them. Maybe you can get alligators and throw them in there. Who knows? Like I like the idea of just having this wild animal kingdom at your disposal wild. that you can just take over and, uh, yeah, wild, right in the title. And just basically <laughs> attack cannibals, because cannibals are awful. You yeah. just kill them with animals. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, viewers, if you have your own thoughts on Sony's press conference today, tweet them at me, uh, at Dame Zero, and we'll share them with everyone here on the show. Maybe the biggest surprise for me was uh, that that Kara PS3 demo from so many years ago is yeah. going to be a real game called Detroit. Yeah, and I think Quantic it's Dream. it's uh, it's pretty smart of Quantic Dream to sort of head-on embrace the whole Android thing, because a lot of their characters looked like that to begin with. <laughs> like, Aww. I mean, no, seriously. Brian. What, really? Like, the Uncanny Valley is 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 tried and true in, in their games. You can't tell who's, who's a person and who isn't. Like, a lot of their facial animations are a little weird, and I think it's good to just sort of head on embrace this. No, you're saying that without, like, you're not yeah, you're no, taking I'm not, the dick. Like, that, I'm mean, not bashing I, I it. I see like, your play, point. Play up to your strengths, you know? You know, yeah, the, I, the name Detroit actually is, is taken from a, a Native American word that means Uncanny Valley. Really? <laughs> That's no, not true. not at all. <laughs> Well, Detroit is, you know, a very industrial city, so it's yeah. interesting that they chose to set this game where they're mass manufacturing robots there in Detroit. It yeah. is good to see uh, factories running again in Detroit and people <laughs> employed. I mean, I like <laughs> I like <laughs> employed, I guess. I like good sci-fi. This looks, you know, very Blade Runner, uh, but with kind of a you know, modernized aesthetic, and it's, yeah. it seems like it's, this is not just like, hey, would it, wouldn't it be cool if people had carbon fiber cars and shot lasers and stuff? They're like, hey, here's kind of a... Here's some speculative fiction. Like, what's the future actually going to be like? Yeah. What would Androids I, do here? I absolutely loved Heavy Rain. It's one of my favorite PlayStation 3 games. I didn't love Beyond Two Souls, Me but either. I was really glad I played it. Hmm. That there's a difference between a, you know, yep. that, there, that there's that distinction to be made. And so uh, I'm there day one for Detroit just to see, you know, I, 
are we going to get you know really good David Cage? Not yeah. quite as good, but e either way, it's going to be. It's almost certain, go certainly going to be memorable. I'm hoping we get that sort of branching path story stuff that Heavy Rain had, that had everybody yeah. you know here at IGN at the time talking about how they played things differently, which we got again with you know games like The Walking Dead. But yeah, I think it's it's very fascinating. It's weird to me how it's a futuristic city, but most of the people still dress like the dad from Watch Dogs. Yeah, I mean, that's like, kind of that's kind of realistic. Technology you know? hasn't changed, and that's that's what I love. Is this looks like what people wear on the street, you know. I yeah. will say, You're Detroit wearing... does invite uh, the, the Detroit with robots, a little, little kind of RoboCop. It definitely <laughs> inviting oh, yeah. the RoboCop. Oh, yeah, totally. Also it's... reminds me of the 2015 film Ex Machina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where an AI is uh, you know going out 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 into society to try to. Which I mean, yeah, without spoiling that movie, I mean, this looks yeah. like this is picking up where certain things there were happening. So yeah, exactly. um, yeah, yeah, it looks really cool. It's it's cool to see him. Back making a new game. Um, I, I know we had talked in the pre-show about uh, the remasters of the games that he's working on, or yep. that had, he had worked on already. No mention so, of that. No mention of those. Yeah. Uh, it's cool they yeah. focus on the new stuff. Yeah, I wonder if, because you know, typically, in, in, from my experience in talking to game developers and, and being uh, around them a little bit, it's after a project is done, they're usually prototyping multiple things, trying to decide mm -hmm. what to do next. They've got several ideas, like, oh, let's let's iterate on this, let's try this, or, and then they usually will scrap a couple and just focus on one. And I wonder if that Kara demo, you know, if they planned to make that. He seemed to, to indicate on stage that they weren't necessarily looking to head in that direction, but then it got a ton of views on YouTube. And yeah. they went, well maybe let's see, let's see yeah. if there's something here. And they yeah, began an iterating on it and here we are. Yeah, he mentioned like 26 million views on YouTube, which I think a lot of was sort of uh, us kind of, everyone's kind of saying, what is the power of the PlayStation 4? And less mm. so much like, this is a game I want to play. Right. So we still don't know how the gameplay is going to work here. It's probably going to be a lot of dialogue trees as we've seen mm. in some I of want other that. games. Yeah. I felt, that, I felt <laughs> the, the jump between uh, Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls, uh, Beyond felt way more like, in more video gamey, like it felt like you were really controlling yeah, it more, less less quick time events. Yeah, and if he continues down that path, I'm totally cool with it. Mm -hmm. Getting back to Wild and Horizon for just a moment, one of our viewers, Hermoth, uh, observes that Wild, Far Cry Primal, Horizon, Firewatch, nature-based games is the new thing. I think yeah. it's. I said this in the in our in the IGN bullpen earlier. I really genuinely think this is a this is the natural mm -hmm. industry reaction to what has now been years of. Modern warfare and future yeah. games. It is just that pendulum swinging back, mm. sure. and, I, and I'm totally good with it. I think I'm, it's also it's it's also the technology now is is it's a chance to show off stuff like foliage and a lot of different colors giant at once. Giant dinosaurs, and mm -hmm. it's like it's easier for a computer to make something that's kind of rigid. It's carbon fiber armor True. is conceivably easier to make than a tree. Yeah, you know, so it's mm. you know you're dealing with vectors and, and crap. All right, dialing it back to the top of the show, we saw a new Star Wars Battlefront trailer. Gorgeous. Oh yeah, absolutely oh, stunning. And this is what, so I've been really excited about this game, obviously, but it's turning out to be that kind of like big Star Wars mixtape that we all wanted, where they're just yeah. taking crazy alien species, like real deep cut alien yeah. species, and just throwing them in there. Yeah. Like you can play as Twi'leks and stuff like that, which I really wasn't expecting to see in a trailer just a few weeks out before the game. When, I was expecting that six months into the season pass. When, uh, when, Ma when the, uh, there was the Endor, just right here, right here, yeah. I heard mm -hmm. Max audibly yip. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> And that wasn't even what got me most excited. Like watching this, uh, I've been saying this kind of going on so far. It, it honestly, it, we've seen a lot of humans with guns and military hardware, which doesn't seem too far fetched from a battlefield game, which isn't yeah. terrible. But what I like about Star Wars is stuff like the Pit of Carcoon or the fact that you've got what is that a Zabrak there? You've got a Duro running around. Yeah. I tweeted that like I want Quarren, which is what the, they're like the Squidhead aliens from yep. the Jabba's Palace, mm. and somebody found a screen cap of one, and I'm just like, well, that's what I want. So if I can play as a as a squid-headed alien was that, man. Was that the first time we've seen somebody jumping over a Sarlacc pit? Yeah, I, that's so, awesome. Yeah. I think I'm maybe still, maybe in a, in a uh, cinematic trailer yeah. we might have seen that, but yeah. I'm still really, really sad that, uh, that there's not a narrative-driven single-player campaign to, uh, to drive, you know, to really experience the cool gameplay mechanics here, but uh, yeah, it's, it's so, they really seem to have nailed Star Wars, if the beta's any indication. The way I've kind of been making up for that in my head is just by going, well, that's the story of Star Wars. <laughs> That's I like the this. story of Star Wars. Yeah. I mean it's just basically like I know what's I know I know what Star Wars means to me. God, look at this. There's yep. so much cool stuff going on here. I Yeah. The Palpatine voice that they had, not the well, best one. Neither was the Han Solo one, I didn't think, but Yeah. yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, uh, switching gears to Street Fighter. We've got a release date for Street Fighter V. February 16th next year. That's gonna February. Be, that's going to be the week before Far Cry Primal, Deus Ex, Mirror's Edge, and uh, maybe more importantly for Street Fighter, Dead or Alive Extreme 3. Hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, I feel like oh. Dead or Alive is in a tough spot. Hey, Marty. Hey, Wild Marty, Marty joins the group. I did it. I wrote a whole article and then I came here. Yeah, I feel like a lot of those games are for different people. Like, I don't really know if how far the Street Fighter crowd overlaps with a lot of those titles. Well, yeah. Does uh, DOA Extreme have much of a competitive crowd, or is that... I don't is think that, so. Is, that, is, is the eSports community? Yeah, yeah is that's the, sort of like me. But no, not at Evo. I mean, Evo, like DOA, is not a huge is, thing. Is sexy yeah. volleyball a big thing at, at the I mean, it's a big thing in Vegas, but just not at yeah. Evo itself. Yeah. Behind yeah. closed doors. Yeah. And we thought they were going to announce Blanca uh, for the game, but instead yeah. they announced Dalton. Yep. Yeah, there were some leaks, and, and Ono was, was tweeting out some weird things with electric. Yeah, I think he threatened to electrocute someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Direction. So, Dawson's got a, kind of a new look here. He's got a beard. Yeah. He's got a new look. Uh, Vince pointed out a couple of cool things he's able to do. He's able to uh, sort of hover in the air when he trans, uh, yep. transports, and then he can also like do this weird arcing fireball thing. Mm. Um, I feel like he's gone full like Stretch Armstrong, even more than he did back on Street Fighter, back in the early days when, when yeah. Dawson was around. Which um, I always love this character. He's my favorite character to kind of cheap cheat my way through the yeah, through sure, matches. Yeah, cheat to win. Uh, ono also announced that the 16th and final uh, release character uh, is going to be revealed at some point in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't really say if that's going to be a classic character or not. I mean, everyone's sort of been waiting for Blanca because that's I think that might be the last original fighter who right. hasn't been in the game. Um, then they also revealed that what was it five characters are going to be coming to PlayStation 4 like after launch, within yeah. the six months after launch, and they showed their silhouettes and mm -hmm. who it yeah. might be. Yeah. Well, Marty, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank well, you for having me. What was your big takeaway from Sony's conference today? Oh, geez. Um, they really leaned heavily into, they should have, like, you know, we've all been saying we needed to know more about what's going on in 2016 after Uncharted. Mm -hmm. right. uh, we know Uncharted's coming up, but then it's like, well, what's actually happening with PlayStation VR? What games are we actually going to be playing in the fall, well, theoretically? And I think we saw a lot of those with uh, with Horizon and with um, with Wild. And they really showed off, they showed off some more interesting VR things. I think like mm -hmm. I really liked what uh, that Until Dawn the, the VR experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Rush, I thought, Rush of Blood. Yeah, Rush of Blood that takes place sort of on a roller coaster. I thought I, that was I think cool. And it terrifying. was it was sort of their uh, them being like if you're buying a, a PlayStation Four this Christmas, uh, don't worry about just playing games this mm -hmm. fall. We we got you covered all next yeah. year, which I, a lot of the, a lot of developers aren't very good with. Yeah, you know? so which, it's cool to see that. Yeah, and they've already like they they began the show with like yeah we don't have a ton of exclusive stuff uh, this fall, but like we are the ones did leading they, heavily into Battlefront. Did they actually and like mention that? Uh, so they didn't mention him. Word for word, but that was when they were showing like this is what we have this fall. Like there were there weren't really any yeah. exclusives aside yeah. from like the Uncharted yeah. collection. Um, but they you know they showed Battlefront, which everyone wants to play, and, and AC Syndicate, which everyone's already mm -hmm. playing. Um, but yeah, it was it was cool to see what we're going to be playing next year. They didn't what? pop that exclusively on PS4 logo, yeah. Or, yeah, or first or, or on, first on PS4. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think about Boundless? Boundless looked really cool. That was one of it's those a new game announcements. Yeah, that was a new game announcement. Um, that was one of those like I think I was writing a news story and someone was like, "You gotta look up. It's a Marty game." Yeah. I looked up and it was totally a Marty game. Yeah. Mad Marty game. Mad Marty. Game. Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> oh man, I really I was initially feeling it and then I kind of just lost interest very quickly. Mm -hmm. Why is really? that? It looks it looks very like it looks like uh, Minecraft with with a more kind of stringent sense of art direction. But mm -hmm. I'm not crazy about like the little alien guys you play as. They look very very like. Mega blocks to me. Yeah, I, mean, I thought they were cute looking. Like again, it's it was a I think a non narrated trailer, so we didn't really know what was going on. But like the world looked really cool, and I'm a, I'm a sucker for sort of portally, interdimensionally things like this. Yeah, I mean I, I'm with Max in that I'm not wild about the art direction in the characters. Um, yeah. Some of them are really cool though. Like those are pretty cool. Yeah. But like this, the more humanoid characters, if that what you, so you want to call yeah. that pink elk man that just ran by. <laughs> but uh, I, I like the idea. I, I, the the world itself looks kind of like a really cool Minecraft mod, which I'm okay yeah. with. Um, again, it's going to come down to how much player involvement there is mm -hmm. and how much I'm personally willing to create stuff in it. I got really into Minecraft for a while, so I could see myself losing myself into this a little bit. Yeah. But really, at the end of the day, I want to come home and, and just play a game that's finished. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah, totally. So but the, we'll it see. sort of it reminded me a little bit in a weird way of Proteus, which I know Max and I adore, and mm -hmm. in, in that it seems like a game, I've become a big fan of games that just allow me to jump into a space and explore it. Right. And sort of like, I don't I don't always need like friction and, and huge difficulty, which I love in like yeah. Bloodborne and Dark Souls, but sometimes I just want to, you know, relax and just wander around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that said, I, we don't know what the hell this game is no, about. No, not at all. You got cool. it's, you've got a hammer, there's cubes, yeah. there's weird Maybe that was Mjolnir. With, I like the sort of paintings from Mario 64 they have that you can jump <laughs> yeah. in and go to different Levels, yeah. yeah, that's a cool idea. So I don't know if this was clear from the presentation, but it's a PS4 and PC cross-platform game huh. that oh, interesting. plays in the same universe. And the official description says, when you open a portal to a new world, you never know what, you, what you'll get. Sometimes you'll thrive, sometimes you'll have to fight to survive. When you find that world that you really like, uh, you can make it your official home and claim some land using a beacon. 
Interesting. Oh, I weird. feel like I'm gonna we're gonna walk through a lot of portals and see a lot of dongs. Yeah, that's usually dongs. what happens. If you give people in the video game world power to create, they make huge dongs. <laughs> so, so speaking of creating and that, that type of gameplay, uh, dreams. Yeah. Dreams, yeah. yeah. Dreams looks really cool. Which looks also vaguely nightmarish. Yeah. <laughs> you want to be a weird uh, pig-headed girl woman who takes control of a giant rat in pants? Oh, yeah. Great that was a, That was a bear. I, was you it, know, was I'm, it a bear? So. I'm cautiously bear. optimistic about this one. I feel like these things never show well in the middle of one of these conferences. Yeah. Like, it is totally a record screeching kind of moment where like, I didn't know what was going on for a lot of it. And again, it's going to come down to what people make. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of these games, they turn out to be... Uh, sort of people are creating kind of inferior versions of games that I'm enjoying somewhere else. Yeah. You know, like they're like, here's a platformer, but it doesn't, it's not the best platformer. Here's a racing game. Like they, they showed this soccer game at one point that, that they had made. And like, is that going to be more fun than say like FIFA, FIFA or is? Pez. Or, yeah. um, so it's interesting. I, I love I love this sort of watercolor look. I like some of the art stuff they're doing when they go noir and go to full black and white and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of cool creativity here. And yeah. the idea of all of it being built up from scratch on PS4 is is insane to me. Yeah, uh, I mean, Media Molecule is one of those developers that, like, even if I'm not super in love with, like, I think I appreciate Little Big Planet more than I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Tearaway, I, I absolutely adore as sure. a game. Uh, one thing I think that is that's just terrifying. Yeah, it's kind of closer to us. <laughs> Get back! It's trying, <laughs> it's trying to kill us. Um, one thing that I think is really cool with this is, like they said, uh, a lot of games, you know, like uh, get out of here. Everything from Little Big Planet to Mario Maker, uh, yeah, there's yeah. a divide between play and creation. Yeah. Whereas with this, there is only the one, and so the whole thing is like you're not just like, well, I'm going to play because it's as you are playing, you are remixing people's levels. So you are right. entering people's dreams, and you are fidgeting with them, and then the next person that enters is going to enter your remixed version of that. It's good, like sort good of luck. Like, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my hell. Welcome to dogs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That said, I'm, I'm really excited about this. So am I. I like to draw bears. This yeah. is like a thing that I, I think I could get into. You do like to draw bears. I draw bears true. a lot. They're pretty, they're pretty exciting. And yeah, I, yeah it's just, uh, it doesn't, you can't demo this because it, it, it relies entirely on a community to create stuff. But I mean, we are, this generation of consoles is the first one that has launched with social media being a part of our lives, yeah. you know? Like, I, and I, I feel like Little Big Planet kind of, when did that? When did that launch? When did the first one come out? Was it two thousand eight? I think. Yeah, that was uh, that was nineteen eighty one. That was still like the MySpace <laughs> yeah. years. You yeah, know? like yeah. things we didn't have that kind of stuff where it was like, hey, check out this level that somebody made in this thing. Like we weren't just all kind of sharing stuff constantly. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like most of the cool stuff that's come out of something like Little Big Planet has been, hey, somebody made a first person shooter using the you know customization here, which is insane. Yeah. And this is a game that seems to lean pretty heavily into that, but not. You know, yeah. No, you're, you're right in that. Like social media plays a huge part in the discoverability in games like this now. Um, like it's one of the things Mario Maker suffered from was being able to actually find the best stuff there consistently. Mm -hmm. um, so things will get featured and get fluttered to the top more here. But I'm worried that this will just turn into people making World One One for Mario or making Contra or making Mario sixty four. Um, yeah. And in that in that way, it's kind of cool to see that sort of cover song aspect of it. But uh, I. If, it, if people turn this around and just make completely bizarre original things in it, which is obviously what this demo here is hinting at, uh, then I'll be pretty happy with it. Yeah, I, f I feel like, I don't know, from what I'm getting from this, you're making things that are less mechanically intensive and more of like cool places to wander around. So in that way, it almost right. feels like you're building, Minecraft. You're building dioramas, basically. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, which I'm sort of fine with. Theaters. Yeah. I mean, the, the Little Big Planet always had that, that kind of puppet show vibe to it. And then, you know, they did they do Puppeteer? Or was that They those? did not. Okay. No, that it had a similar aesthetic. Yeah. But, yeah. like, it's very much, it, you know, you could always kind of make Sackboy, like, kind of dance around and it sort of look like a little, little puppet. And it's, always, yeah. it's always had that very crafty vibe to it. And this seems like, yeah, you're building you're building dollhouses. You're making stuff in mm -hmm. virtual space. And that's... That's fascinating. Why is that Lincoln? Why, why, is, why is Lincoln there? <laughs> what are they doing in this morgue? All right, now switching gears a little bit, uh, one of our viewers, that light skin guy, asks... <laughs> oh, that one. Are you, you know, the one. Are you guys disappointed you didn't get to see Final Fantasy VII Remake gameplay? No, because... I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting it. Um, yeah. I, don't, I, I think at, uh, at E3, that was their, hey, uh, we're going to make this less than, hey, we're making this. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the fact that, you know, I still think Final Fantasy XV is a ways off. I definitely think Kingdom Hearts 3 is a ways, ways off. And so I think that is 
far-flung future. Yeah, um, I think so too. So, yeah, I'm not disappointed. I'm stoked that it's happening um, because I mean, we've been wanting that to happen for 15 years. Yeah. On the pre-show, we talked about Final Fantasy VII, Shenmue Three, and Last Guardian, mm -hmm. and none of them were here today. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how much any of us really expected from any yeah. of them. I'd say E3 for most of those things. Yeah, I'd say E3 for Last Guardian. I would be shocked if we hear anything about the other two. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we got a release window for No Man's Sky. No yes. Man's Sky. At long last. We've yeah. narrowed the window down to a month long window. Mm -hmm. A month and a year. Now, is it yeah. before or after E3? Because that makes a. I mean, that's. Yeah. So, yeah, the last couple of years. Problem, last oh, couple of years yeah, have been big for uh, pre E3 games. Like, we've had uh, two years ago, we had. I guess it was two years ago, we had The Last of Us. Yeah, that was basically uh, the, the day we went to E3. Yeah. And yeah. then last year we had Witcher. And then right after E3 was Batman. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's going to be an interesting yeah. window to see. Like, I mean, are they going to do that weird, like, and it's out now thing? Yeah. Like they're going to finally show it on stage. And I pulled up the dates here. E3 2016 is June 14th to 16th. Okay, so just smack dab yeah, in the middle. Right in the middle. Yeah. Oh, so we got yeah. 230 days and 23 hours left. That's cool. Don't say that. I have a, I'm, having a I'm literally having a pack. Hey, look at those cool <laughs> veins in your foreheads. <laughs> um, one cool thing in that trailer, Rucker Howard was yeah, in the video. I didn't, I didn't yeah. that at first. I was, was kind of weird about that because they were doing a very obvious sort of, hey, it's a Blade Runner reference, but I don't know how I feel about Like Blade Runner is very dark and broody and it's my favorite movie, and mm -hmm. I yeah. sort of am cool with them doing something with that. It just felt sort of like a Shinx. kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was looking at that part and wondering if all the planet levels are going to be randomly generated like QWERTY text yeah. like that, where it's just just <laughs> as the give us welcome to Flark. <laughs> I think with a lot of things, if you discover them, you might be able to name them. That's yeah, true. Right? This is, this is, I, I love these, these ideas Welcome that there's... Welcome to Dong Town. <laughs> yeah. I love, Dong Burn. I, I, I one. I love Think bigger, Damon. Dong City. <laughs> Dong World. Dongopolis. Yeah. The idea that we Dongtopia. are in a universe where people, once this is out in the wild, people aren't going to be like, Welcome to Buttland. <laughs> the planet of butts. <laughs> I mean, luckily you can't make things in No Man's Sky, or it would just yeah, be like, just, yeah, discover. Uh, what I mean, one of the interesting things, this is still sort of in that window where uh, PlayStation VR might be coming out, and this has been that game yep. where we keep thinking like, maybe this is going to be the launch, that killer yeah. app that mm -hmm. that PlayStation VR, that oh. VR itself might need. We got some VR stuff to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, Lots of VR stuff today. We mm -hmm. already mentioned uh, the uh, Until Dawn Rush of Blood. Yeah, spooky. Uh, which house. is going to be an on rails experience. That's going to be different from. The yeah, I mean, literally on rails yeah. on a roller coaster. Well, not really. You won't literally be on. Well, rails. you won't literally. Well, at, like the new definition of literally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think yeah. we're going to see something. <laughs> I think oh, VR horror experiences are going to be, at least for the kind of for the time being, they're going to be very static. Like yeah. they're going to be either on rails or sitting in one position. Mm -hmm. The Capcom demo they've had for PlayStation VR, the kitchen, you're sitting in a chair yeah. in the yeah. kitchen. That's terrifying. Um, <laughs> and it's scary enough just like that. Mm -hmm. But I think that to get people to actually kind of. Like it has to be sort of like a, just a immersive movie because people aren't going to want to go into that world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's, it's pretty terrifying when you've got a thing on your face. Yeah, people seem to really enjoy the uh, the demo for Robinson: The Journey. Yeah, that was we saw that uh, back in June. Uh, Crytek revealed it, but we didn't. It, they just said it was coming to VR, mm. uh, so we didn't know what it was coming to. But now we see that it's coming to PlayStation VR. Um, yeah, I mean Crytek's a super talented developer, and that was really cool. Like, dinosaurs. yeah, again, yeah. more dinosaurs, which I'm, you know, I'm totally fine with. Yeah. Um, it was, it was gorgeous. I don't think it was um, actual gameplay footage, just watching the way the camera was sort of mm -hmm. tracking around. But it's really cool. I don't know how we play it yet. If it's just a sort of like discovery adventure game, that's cool. Um, you've got this. You know, Peter Dinklage robot, robot back. Yeah, it's uh, actually a Nolan North robot now. Oh, good. Yeah, he gets replaced all the time, left and right. But yeah, we haven't seen this guy pick up a gun or anything like that. Uh, so we don't even know. I mean, I'm assuming there's going to be combat in this game, and yeah. not just yeah. so watching the, other dinosaurs die. The official description reads: In Robinson, you assume the role of a young boy who has crash landed on a mysterious planet and must become a pioneer of sorts as you explore your surroundings, interact with the world around you, and discover amazing secrets. Oh, yeah. secrets! Real interesting to see. I mean, if if you're playing as a young boy. And there's dinosaurs. I assume they're probably going for a more all ages approach than we're used to from Crytek. Yeah. Which I'm pretty curious about. Yeah. Not that I don't like blood and guts as much as the next guy, but you know, this is. Yeah, and also generally hands. games where you're playing as a young kid, you can't die in. Like developers rarely have you play as a child who yeah. can die. Are except I guess be, in spoilers. Yeah. Are we gonna be horribly <laughs> let down if uh, if you know, you are on rails for this. Like, if we're just being guided through this world by this little floaty thing, and yeah. maybe there's a few quick time events here and there, but 
No, I mean, I think uh, too much freedom in a VR game, I mean, I don't know. Like, we don't know enough about exploring 3D spaces in VR to know right. what works and what doesn't and how much freedom is too much freedom. Well, that's where I'm kind of hesitant on VR because I'm if, if if these games are going to be available on PS4 and PlayStation VR, then it's if it's decidedly better on one side of it than the other. I mean, if you're just playing that in your television and you lose a 3D immersion and it's just this... Roll, you know, roller coaster through Dinosaur Town. That's kind of fun, but I mean, yeah. we had we had stuff like that in the '90s at arcades. You know, uh, yeah. take the roller coaster through Dong Town. Dong Town. <laughs> 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 now we did see one thing. Uh, this is the first instance of uh, hold for laughs. <laughs> Are you done? No. Are you done yet? Hold on. You gonna laugh about Dong Town Wait, some more? Hold on. Whole town full of dongs. You think that's funny, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> there's okay. one. There's one more in there. Got so enough. we've seen mostly kind of. Gaming related stuff for for PlayStation VR. We did get to see the the VR experience of the Wire Walker. The, the Walk, wire, yeah, yeah, Wire Walker, yeah. which yeah. is uh, I think really interesting. I I've been saying don't, this for a while. Don't ever Wire Walker. <laughs> Um, it's going to be using VR as sort of a, a supplement to an existing property or a movie or something. Yeah. Like we saw that that one that was climbing the wall in Game of Thrones, and they, they blow fans oh, yeah. at you, and they had that at conventions. I with... saw one in New York that was uh, the, the you know Mission Impossible holding onto the side of the plane thing. Exactly. And they put a huge jet in your face. Yeah, and, kill, and I they think kill they, you for real. I think that is a, a huge instance of, of like. This is a practical application of VR as yeah. a marketing device. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you have this set up at the mall, like those those tubes you get in, and it's like ride the tornado, and then go play the claw machine. Like yep. it's what tube is that? Go <laughs> to the mall. Like one of those things where it's like it's a hurricane simulator. You like, and they blow jets of air at you. With the one with the dollars in it? Is that what you're talking about? No, cash grab no, machine? not grab that. The dollars. I mean, like you go to like Universal City Walk or something. They have stuff like this every which way. It's like have your picture taken next to a real football uniform or what? You know, people like to do goofy stuff like this. Uh, so I was watching this, and not to get too deep, but I think that one thing that could really come from this is that, that's kind of incredible is teaching people to overcome actual fears and phobias. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like I'm Maybe. I'm not really afraid of heights. I'm sort of vaguely afraid of heights. When I, I think there's no one in the world that can watch the trailers for the walk and not see the those angular shots of him looking down. Yeah. And not being like, oh yeah, I got this. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, there's no confidence there for most people. So I think there's there's something there, and it's it's actually a really good way to sort of sell people on what this thing does before putting them into this immersive video games with yep. you know controllers and stuff like that. It's just say, hey, walk on a rope on the floor. Yeah, and like we've said, like the uh, VR is sort of one of those things that you need to actually experience in order to sort of believe. It's yeah. like hard to watch a video of VR and understand what it's actually like. And right. so if this does start showing up at movie theaters and at malls and at Best Buy and yeah. stuff like yeah. that, if you've never done it and you think it's nonsense. Maybe do try, it. Try, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. go to your go to your local whatever store Apothecary. that has the thing you can put on your face. Mm -hmm. Still no price or release date for no. No PlayStation VR though. I think CES is a safe bet for that. Yep. Yep. Maybe PSX, but mm. yeah, yeah. PSX will be in December. Uh, CES is early January. Uh, I thought it was likely that Housemark might have something mm -hmm. to show here, and they uh, <laughs> unveiled a new game called Matterfall. Yeah, yeah. We don't know a ton about. It. It's interesting that they announced a new game before their new game. They is have out. another new game called Alienation. Alienation. That's not yeah. Right. yeah. This um, is a, and Super Stardust HD is still supposed to come to PS4. Oh, man. I thought they had like like Resogun was gorgeous. Yes. Tons of style to that. This felt like just like real like matter. It's even even the title seemed kind of like not really having its own identity. You're like this sort of carbon fiber robot guy with a gun for an arm, and you're jumping around shooting some crystalline stuff. Well, it looks like they're playing with the voxels again, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I, do, I did. I like the voxel stuff because it reminded me of uh, Resogun. But yeah, like the city and character designs are sort of feels like sci-fi. They're Just also playing with the, like a color mechanic. Like you are blue and the enemies are so red. red. Yeah, and that's in the uh, the logo for the yeah. game too. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, so as as demonstrated by games like um, uh, Rocket League, like this could be an incredibly fun game. But mm -hmm. I feel like showing it off with a pre-rendered sort of more yeah, cinematic cut scene. Yeah, yeah. scene is not really. Yeah, this, I mean, yeah. we also it's a very pretty FMV trailer they showed us. Today. Yeah, and like we, I needed I need to see how these things play. And know? we don't know if this is a top-down twin stick game like Dead Nation or like Alienation. Right. Is this a side game like Resogun? Is this not like either of them? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, but I'm, I wasn't I wasn't blown away. But by can that. we? I think Max, you tweeted this out. There's certain words that need to be banished oh, from completely. video game titles. Yeah. Fall is one of them now. Yep. Fall, battle. Yeah. Battle. battle uh, blood. Uh, there's a couple. There's Dawn. It's one dong. Of them. Dong. <laughs> Until, Until dong. dong. Yeah. <laughs> nope. From dong. dusk till dong. Yeah. Horizon zero dong. There, to be fair, there probably are zero dongs in that game. No, I bet that there's at least a few dongs in that Think game. So? Yeah. yeah. Caveman pro probably walk just. Dong just the cavemen are all about just having that dong out. Speaking so of early in the morning. <laughs> Speaking of Horizon Zero Video Dawn, game journalism. We did see a new uh, gameplay demo. 
for that one. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So oh. that was uh, that's very cool. that was sort of a take on what we saw behind closed doors at E3, which uh, never, I don't think, got released uh, to the public. But um, it showcased, it was, it was interesting again because it was the same uh, game, like the same area, but it really showed me how sandboxy. Mm -hmm. It could be, and how you can do all these different things and set up a bunch of cool traps. And, like, really, if you want to kill this single robo T Rex, like, there's a bunch of different ways to do it, which I really like. Oh, man. It's yeah. real pretty. Uh, I like this is one of those frustrating games where I don't want to see any more of it in action. I just yeah. want to play it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I also like that it's an action RPG, yep. and there's loot elements yep. in it. Yep. And I like how there's cool things, like when you're fighting this dinosaur, like you can target a bunch of different things. Oh, well, not even targeting, but it's just like what you're aiming at, which I guess is literally targeting. Yeah. Um, but you can like knock off chest plates, and it makes this one area of his body uh, weaker, and you start attacking that, which I think is really cool. Um, and they have that part soon where I think uh, they sort of pause the game and then zoom out, and you see the scope of how the uh, of the size of the character com or your character compared to the dinosaur itself, and mm. the scope was just really good. Oh, I don't like that thing; it's scary. This game's gonna be scary. See, I was actually thinking the opposite thing that this game is basically just like a cybernetic version of a hunter going of, in the woods and just messing with everything. It's just, it's just, this it's, is... It's big game hunter. I was about yeah. to say, this like game could be a calm. Cabela, future Cabela. Yeah, yeah this is future this Cabela. Yeah. Oh, right in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> really didn't like that, that. Yeah. Sad uh, reindeer. Marty, you're a big Bloodborne fan. I'm a big Bloodborne fan. Bloodborne the Old Hunters is yeah. coming out. We got a, just a short little trailer. Short trailer. It's right. coming out, uh, I think, November 24th. Yeah. Uh, the trailer showcases a lot of cool new weapons, which is something that Bloodborne didn't have a ton of weapons, but each one had mm -hmm. like a lot of personality and strategy to it. And um, I see you, there's a bunch of cool stuff in here. You got that stick with like a saw on it. Yeah, which I thought was really cool because Bloodborne to me was always about <laughs> picking, picking a weapon and then just really become, just getting, mastering you know, it. just mastering mm -hmm. it. And having it narrowed down to just a few of those things. Uh, we did also get to see a new nightmare person horse creature yeah. in this, which yeah. is uh, one of their specialties. Yeah. Just disgusting, oh, wretched, terrible. Just hideous, covered oh, in yeah. white hair, really, really, really bad, wet, and just I love that the, the I have pubes. I think that it's was really um, bad. It's, it's just a so unsettling, thing. and you can't wait to kill it. What is? Oh, look at that! It's, what, so, it, it's, it's head's not where like it's, it's uh, got like, really bad. And then <laughs> the trailer ends with it just screaming at you. Yeah. It just screams at yeah. your face. Yeah. It's really upsetting. Yeah. Love um, that game. Absolutely <laughs> love it. Love, love everything about it. Um, really smart timing on that, too, I think. Uh, like, Bloodborne came out at a really early time of the year, and so I think a lot of people may have forgotten how amazing it was after stuff like uh, Batman and Metal Gear yep. and, and Witcher. Uh, whereas now, everyone's going to be reminded that we're probably going to get that Game of the Year edition by the end of the year, and so I think it's a smart final push to sort of close out the year of... Uh, yeah. Also, you look at just kind of time of year. We're coming up on Halloween. Uh, Christmas mm. is... Every, everything gets darker. You know, things are just kind of inherently spookier, and mm -hmm. I yeah. feel like playing that game in the middle of June is sort of... Like, oh, it's nice out. Yeah, my friends yeah. are at there's the beach, and there's glare from the sun outside. Big horse rat, but this yeah. is a good kind of like there. The winter is out there. Christmas yeah. is oh, when I usually coming. drag out my my seasonal horse people statuettes and just adorn them all over the front of my <laughs> property. There's <laughs> only one way to get over seasonal depressions by just putting down a horse horse yeah. beast. Yeah, yeah. just cover it in teeth and hair. The <laughs> hounds of winter. Yeah. We got to see Gravity Rush two, mm -hmm. and uh, I think they introduced a new AI controlled companion. Yeah, mm -hmm. that game's got. Real cool bosses. Yeah. It's very pretty, and there's a lot of cats. Some yeah. kind of all yeah, those, if, that, if they're looking yeah. for uh, bullets for the back of the box, that's that's it right there. Now, yeah. is this a, is this new? They've got the different styles. Like yeah, yeah, different, the different styles of fighting, which yeah. is really cool. Before it was just kind of like gravity on or off, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, this game really does like it. Just opens up that world that Gravity Rush slash Gravity Days built on. Uh, the, you know, at the launch of the Vita, and it sort of create it. It just expands everything like the camera just zooms out I mean both literally and figuratively the camera is just zooming out on this world and really giving us a much bigger play space yep yeah I'm stoked I never got to play uh, Gravity Rush so yeah I think a lot of people missed out on it and so it's exciting that that's coming to PS4 uh, you know in, in a little bit and then we're gonna you know be able to prepare ourselves for this Epic boss fights. Mm. Congrats, guys. Finally, a game with epic boss fights. Giant enemy crab. <laughs> uh, we got to see uh, the first trailer for the multiplayer in Uncharted 4, and Brian, mm -hmm. you were saying you liked all the supernatural elements that they're adding. Yeah, I think they've been like really weird and sort of like tucking that stuff to the side for so long, and they're just full-on embracing it. Like, I mean, there was a scene in, what was it, Uncharted 2, where they're like, oh, it's a Yeti, and they're like, oh, it's just a guy in a costume. <laughs> but then there's like supernatural stuff just a few minutes later. Yeah. Uh, spoilers, I know Marty hasn't, hasn't played a ton of these, but... That's real rude of you. Okay, I'm very sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, so, th th this stuff where you're basically just morphing <laughs> different, it's weird to see like Sully running out there and just like using supernatural powers and stuff like that. Yeah. Or Elena, I think at one point goes on fire. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, this is crazy. It's just really crazy to see yeah. all this stuff. Uh, the environments are gorgeous. Uh, this could be really fun. I've never been too big in a Uncharted multiplayer. This might be the thing that tips me over. Yeah, I mean, the Last of Us multiplayer was like a secret amazing thing about the game that I think a lot of people played the campaign and loved it and then never actually played the multiplayer. Right. Um, and I know a lot of the same designers are on this, and so, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It also just seems insane. Like, there's yeah. just explosions yeah. everywhere. It's, it's a really odd thing to show off this way mm -hmm. in that, like, this is visually impressive, but kind of all over. The, it looks like a hyper-realistic Team Fortress kind of. Yeah, yeah. And there's lemurs on the wall there. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm into this. I just think this is a sort of weird way to show it off. Like, showing off the cinematic side of multiplayer never really quite goes there. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think this could that. be a ton of fun. I think it was like we were saying on the pre-show, there's a lot of single-player stuff we've seen already in the same few environments, and with that multiplayer beta being part of the Uncharted collection, I think people want to know what they're actually buying into. That's just so ridiculous. I know. Having played those games, it's and, just like... Yeah, and this totem... Yeah, this so we don't even know what's inside this thing, right? Just start screaming and shooting evil. red stuff everywhere. There's a when, drum inside it. When they said oh. that Mystical was coming to the game, I thought it was a hit rapper Mystical. Mystical? No. Yeah. He, I don't I think he can because being... I think he's in jail, isn't he? That's right. You can still be in video games Thanks if you're in jail. Thanks for bringing us all down, Damon. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of bringing everyone down, uh, our viewers are uh, letting me know that Super Stardust HD is actually already on PS4. We did it! So, scoop! Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't anybody let me know? Post scoop. And it's available right now. <laughs> it's been available since February. <laughs> <laughs> Since February. <laughs> uh, I think that pretty much wraps up everything from the conference today. I thought it was a really fun conference. Mm -hmm. Dipped yeah. a little bit during the Gran Turismo portion. Uh, yeah. yeah but there's a little bit. Yeah, it went out a little long, along the teeth. Yeah, they did yeah. show off a lot of really fun games. and uh, Yeah, it was cool. I, I, it'll be interesting to see if they start doing a Paris Games Week show every year, or mm -hmm. are they going to go back to doing every Gamescom? Week. Every week. Every week. I mean, yeah, Paris Games yeah. Weekly. <laughs> uh, and we're going to have a ton of stuff. We have a lot of uh, really cool uh, appointments throughout the week that we're going to be able to deep dive into a lot of the games we yep. saw yep. Uh, today, so we'll have a ton more on that. Plus Podcast Beyond. We'll yeah. Be yeah. Digging into that stuff even more. Yeah. It'll be going up uh, tomorrow, 1 o'clock Pacific time. So We did it. Yeah. I'm proud of us. Yeah. Paris is, a beautiful, is beautiful this time of year, guys. Yeah. I wish really they'd good. let us go outside <laughs> this one room. <laughs> There's complimentary croissants to, under the table. The joke is we're in San Francisco. We're not there. We're not there. They didn't send no. us there. Go to a brasserie. A brasserie? What's your yeah. language? This Brasseries is a family nice. program. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, next up for Sony will be a PlayStation Experience. Yeah, right in, in our backyard. Yeah. Yeah. That will, we'll actually get to go to that. We're actually going to Paris for that. Yeah, we're, we're going to be 